All right, guys, so now I'm going to talk about the thing that's probably the hardest part about throwing a soft bait, and that's where to fish it. I see a lot of guys that struggle with them because a lot of guys don't fish conventional. And I really think that's a detriment to being successful with big baits for a lot of people. I mean, I think there are certainly places in the country where we can just go out and throw a swim bait and be lucky and catch fish. And you can learn along the way and get better and better and better. But I think there's a lot of places like here in the Midwest, the swim baits aren't real popular because it's hard to get bit on swim baits. I mean, it's not something that you can just pick up a swim bait and go out and, unless you've got like a private pond or something that you're fishing, most guys would struggle if they picked up a swim bait and just went out and tried to be successful with it. So especially soft baits. Um, so hard baits to me, at least how I usually fish them, uh, it's more visual kind of structure a lot of times. You know, I like, oh, there's a weed line, throw my hard bait there. There's a dock, go in and out of the dock with a glide bait. You know, there's uh, stuff like that. You know, seawall, walk my bait up along the seawall. Uh, so I feel like the hard bait is more visual because you can't, you don't want to get it hung up. So a lot of times you're not fishing at places where you're going to get hung up. It's more open water or, you know, specific visual targets. But the soft bait is the opposite of that. And I think that's where a lot of guys struggle. This is the thing you're going to be throwing where you're throwing a jig and stuff like that. So that's really how I think of a soft bait is like a jig. So I'm, I'm really attacking all that underwater stuff that you don't see with the soft bait. That's why the fluorocarbon's super important. That's why the braid's super important. So I can feel all that stuff because that the, the fluorocarbon, the line, that's my eyes. You know, the rod is my eyes. That's what I'm seeing the bottom with. I, you know, I, I count down my bait. I know it's, oh, it's, it's, you know, took 10 seconds to hit there, but only took three seconds to hit here. So I know there's a contour there. I can feel, oh yeah, boom, boom, I'm hitting rocks, I'm hitting the right kind of stuff. You don't wanna hit, you don't wanna be dragging the bait over sand. You don't wanna be dragging the bait over certain kinds of things. You wanna make sure there's stuff there. So that's that's the that's the, the, the goal is to find that hard bottom, those specific spot on the spot kind of things. You've heard people say, talk about funnels before, it's the same deal. You know, there's very specific areas where you're fishing this bait. So this is actually off of my dock. I live on one of the biggest public reservoirs here in central Indiana called Morse Reservoir. My neighbor across the way has this lift. Just to the left of it, there's a small patch of rocks. It's, you know, it's maybe five foot in diameter, but the rest of this cove is silted in. But the bass will choose that spot right there to sit because of that hard bottom. Spot on the spot can actually be something really simple as the hard bottom spot in a cove, the only spot that's like that. So that's why it's important to feel around and, and know where that stuff is because that's where the fish will choose to sit if they have a choice. So uh, if I were to just to say, if you're a guy that's never fished a jig, I would say pick up a jig. You, the learning curve on where to, how and where to fish a soft bait is a lot faster on a jig, if you ask me personally. Like take a football jig, throw it out there and drag that thing around and figure out what the bottom of your lake looks like. The jig transmits more information than a swim bait does and, the, and you'll get more bites on it. So you don't, if you don't get feedback, then you don't know what's going on. So the jig gives you more feedback quickly. And so that's why I would say start with a jig if you want to know where to throw a soft bait. I know a lot of guys bypass that, but I'm telling you, it's like the, the information that you get from a jig is invaluable. I mean, it tells you it tells you how deep things are, what kind of bottom, what the structure looks like, what kind of if you find a big a piece of wood, if you find it, it tells you all that stuff. You know, where all that stuff that you can't see, a jig will tell you what it is. So, so it's like early fall transition. A lot of people think that you only creep baits in the, when it's cold or something, and a lot of people think, oh, we use paddle tails when it's summer, you use the wedge tail style baits when it's cold. Well, none of that matters you can use paddle tails when it's cold you can catch them on wedge tails in the middle of summer the reason i'm using a wedge tail right now is because we got like very very dirty water and i have very specific spots that i'm fishing if i'm covering water i'll use a paddle tail bait if i've got very specific areas and i'm trying to creep the bait because really when the water is dirty like this it's about getting your bait in front of the fish and so that's why i'm using the wedge tail i'm creeping it doesn't matter if it's hot doesn't matter if it's cold it's about presentation okay in these situation this situation I need to put my bait here and I need to be able to fish it in this manner that's what that's all that matters so you know don't don't ever think that a wedge tail won't work or a paddle tail won't work because of the season or whatever it's not about that it's all about 
can you present the bait properly for the conditions that you have. All right, so this is a little public pond I fish sometimes. It's a great place for me to test baits and things. But um, there's this creek channel that runs through the middle of this pond, and you can see that pipe over there. That's where the water flows in once it, you know, it rains. You get a lot of rain, water flows in. It washes this out right here, and there's a hard bottom spot out here. There's also a sandbar across the way. So I actually cast the bait all the way across onto that sandbar, and then I drag it out into the uh, creek channel. So basically all I'm doing is just moving it enough to keep the, the bow in my line. Because what I'm, what I'm trying to get this to look like is a, a shad that's not paying attention. You know, I don't know anything about trout fisheries. I don't know how they do it there. But here, in these hard bottom spots, uh, like creek channels and things, up shallow, shad will come in there to feed, and the bass will take advantage of that. So that's what we're trying to look like. We're trying to look like we're a, a shad that's feeding on the bottom, not paying attention. We're not trying to necessarily look injured or anything like that. The bass will sneak up from behind it, whoop, suck it in. So. The thing is, is, you know, I'm not just randomly covering water and stuff like that. I'm targeting these really specific areas. And here I'm creeping the bait because the water's pretty dirty right now. So when the water's dirty, I usually creep the bait. When the water is cold, I usually creep the bait. And when it's warmer or the water's clear, I'll go a little faster. So I kind of vary my retrieve depending on that. But I'm always targeting these very specific spots. Because, you know, if I like bomb this bait out here and start creeping it, you know, I hear people say, go slower and then go slower still. Thing is, if you're creeping a bait and you don't know exactly where you're fishing, you're wasting a bunch of time. So, you know, I, I only creep a bait if I know exactly where there's going to be a fish at. So that's what I'm doing right here. Oh, there's a bite. There it is. See, I ticked it. <laughs> and it went slack again. <laughs> That's a better one there. Oh. oh yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about right there. I would say the number one thing is you want hard bottom. Hard bottom is the number one thing um, for a swim bait. Because that's where the shad are going to be feeding. You know, they're not going to be eaten in the sand and crap. They go to that hard bottom to find all the crap that's in the rocks and stuff. So um, another thing that I look for is some kind of cover, right? So if you got hard bottom and then there's a patch of grass, that's a good, that's a good place to be. If you got hard bottom and then there's a piece of wood in that hard bottom, and you'll know that because you'll feel it when you bump into it. You know, those, those are kinds of places I look for. If you've got a road bed, which is like a, a very specifically oriented hard bottom surface that has like a boulder on it, a couple of boulders, you know, boom, boom, over those boulders. Those are the kinds of things you're looking for. You know, you're looking for some kind of, you know, contour in the bottom of the lake next to some kind of piece of cover. So if you got like a road bed and then there's a patch of grass here, that's a funnel right there. That's, there's gonna be a fish there. Now, just when you throw your bait out there, if you didn't get bit today, that doesn't mean that's not going to be a good spot. I think guys give up on stuff like that. Oh, I didn't get bit. There's nothing there. But the thing is, if it's, if it's right, you got that, that contour on the roadbed and there's a piece of grass here, eventually there will be a fish there. I promise you. So you just got to figure out the timing. You know, make sure the moon's right. And that's a whole different discussion. You guys can look that up about moon phases and all that stuff. But make sure all that's right. The time You're in major time or something like that. It's shad spawn. It's a, it's a time when there will be fish up in there. You know, there's going to be a fish there, you know, where that contour is. Or on a piece of a, a, a boulder. You know, that's the thing is I think, guys, you don't take a soft bait out. You shouldn't necessarily. I mean, maybe some places you can. But in Indiana, in our dirty, shallow water where I fish... If I just took a soft bait out there and cover water like that, it's it's not going to happen. You know, I mean, it's going to take me forever to luck in, and I'd be lucking into a fish. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, ah, I'm a soft bait expert because I lucked into a fish. That's that's how it is. You know, I'm looking for very specific bodies of water that have the the ingredients that I need and and the parts of that body of water where I think there's going to be a shad that's just being stupid. That's, that's it. Cause they're, they're, out, they're there looking for shad that are stupid. You know, <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the ultimate goal is to eat something that's stupid. So you got to figure out where those shad are. All right. So with the soft bait, it's a timing thing. Those bass, they'll roll in from deeper water. So that's one thing to look for. If you've got 
shallow hard bottom next to deeper water that's probably going to hold your better fish usually especially if you have grass or something like that that pulls them in so those fish will come in sit on that grass or a piece of wood or a boulder and ambush shad as they come in boom and then they go back out to deeper water and so it's not like a deal where you're going around casting and covering water all day trying to get bit on a soft bait it's really a timing thing it's specific areas you know that's how i fish it anyway that's how i fish the burrito shad so you'll see me on foot a ton and the reason is is because if i haul my boat out and i get hit that one bite window then i got like three hours until the next bite window and you know you just got to throw a conventional kill time or whatever i'm not going to get bit on it you know there's so many times where it's just inefficient to be out there in the boat when I know I'm not going to get bit. So that's why you see me on foot. You know, I usually hit in the morning, I'll hit it for like an hour and then I'm gone and I go to work. And then maybe at lunch, I'll come out for half hour to an hour and then I go back to work up until nine, 10 o'clock in the morning. A lot of times, and they, they change throughout the year, but that's a good bite window. Noon to one o'clock is always a good bite window, like all year long. That's where I catch most of my fish, the heat of the day, the brightest, part of the day boom that's a good bite window and then usually like four o'clock especially in the fall that's a really good one so different times of the year different bodies of water and things that those windows will change but that's the deal you know figuring out those bite windows and being efficient on the water that's what i like to do i don't like to waste time out there if i'm not going to get bit so you see bubbles in the water there's a lot of activity over here though well, there's probably that's probably a good place to throw a shad soft bait on the bottom stuff like that you know it's like being aware you know, see, if you see schools of shad blowing through somewhere, try to find the nearest hard bottom structure stuff that you can drag a bait over, uh, you know, stuff like that. And that's kind of where you get started. It's really hard to tell people on their specific body of water where they need to be fishing. But I would say, try to find anywhere those, those, those contours and structure and cover meet. Uh, and then that's a good place to start. Look for those bubbles. I mean, this is something I never hear people talk about, but if I'm walking around and I see bubbles in the water, that's suckers. Those are golden shiners. Those are carp. Those are shad. There's hard bottom right there. That's why they're there. And when you get the hard bottom, that's where the shad are going to be too at some point. And then you just got to figure out the time. Come on. Look at that. He had the tail down in his sphincter in a matter of a second, little guy.